hello, how's it going? Gonna do a little video about using enums in Java. So first of all, gonna get the code for Head First Design Patterns. It's a book that tries to simplify some of the design patterns in programming, especially using Java. So Head First Design. And there's a GitHub repo for it. I might have to connect to their main site. See which one comes up first. Right, we'll go. Oh, that was the GitHub repo right below, but it should link from this page as well. So anyway, there's the book. There's a this looks like the version, the exact version I have that claims it's updated for Java 8, which is a lie. And I don't blame that lie on the uh, writers, I blame it on probably the publisher. But it still works with Java 5. There's nothing to do with Java 8 in that anniversary edition. So down here somewhere we see download example code. Huh, GitLab, huh? Okay, I'm just going to go back and get it from GitHub. Don't really have anything against GitLab, but I'm just more familiar with... So right here, Beth Robson, Head First Design Patterns. That's the one. And then it says no releases, but you can just grab the current version of the code. It says it's 2020, second edition of the book. I've never looked at that version of the book, but the code looks virtually the same to me. Okay, save that. And then I'll open it and extract it. And I'm just going to go ahead and run it in a virtual machine. I'm just going to extract it in the downloads folder. Close all these out. Now. Let's go ahead and open up a file explorer and go into that folder. So here's the expanded folder. And there's all sorts of goodies in here because it's for the whole book. But we can just dig into the source head first and then scroll down and go to the state pattern. And there's three in here. This middle one's more or less the uh, the intent of the whole chapter. but this one adds some functionality and this one sort of shows like an initial thing and it's a lot simpler so if you look at this one there's several files there's the gumball machine there's it says test drive it's not like unit test per se but it's sort of similar between somewhere in between like a main program and a unit test and then there's these uh, different states the four different major states that it has it's a gumball machine and I just think of it as like a traditional old gumball machine. Nothing too fancy, just one of those like purely mechanical ones. Or you could think of it as an electronic one that basically has like a very stripped down set of features just like the mechanical ones. And they also have this state. So this is a uh, public interface not a class so this is like a purely abstract interface or purely abstract class so to speak the one benefit is you in Java you can get a multiple inheritance out of a interface but as you can see there's no implementation but it is it all the implementations all these different ones right here like has quarter state this will uh, you can see it implement state right there so that means that the compiler will come over here and it will look at the state interface and it will make sure that you have all of these functions that they're all public that they return nothing they take no parameters and they're spelt like this and whatnot so sort of an error checking mechanism compile time error checking mechanism and this is the particular has quarter state after you inject the quarter into the gumball machine and so you can see here this is the uh, constructor it takes in a gumball machine and stores that machine to refer to it an instance so in theory you could have multiple gumball machines and use the same code 
there's the insert quarter and all it basically does for the most part is just spit back some sentences at us to the screen that's what that test driver displays and if it's imperative to the operation it will also change the state as needed so if it had a quarter and you eject a quarter it will uh, gumball machine set state da 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 anyway this is a pretty traditional pretty generic way of doing a design or well a design pattern but particularly the state pattern and the thing is Java can do it just a little bit more concisely and it also has benefits of being a little bit safer to the way that using an enum so let me see here these are just more states I'll go ahead and close those out the gumball machine itself so you can see here's the four states again they're each declared as that state type which once again everything goes back to that interface and make sure that it's all consistent between all the things so that we know that uh, that we're pretty much conforming to that and then the actual object the class itself has two instance variables it has a state which holds one of these states at any given point one of these states will be saved to this variable and that then when it calls things on it let's see if we have an example down here so if you call a jet quarter on the just the actual gumball machine it will call state dot eject quarter so if it's in the sold out state if that was the last time we saved something this to the state like the last gumball goes out and it says okay the last gumball went um, after turn crank or whatever or after release ball then it will go to that um, sold out state and then when we call the function it will effectively go to like so if we go to sold out state it sold the last gumball we try and insert a quarter then it's gonna say you can insert a quarter because the machine is sold out should pretty much make sense I know the codes pretty ugly um, Java especially is not real conducive to composition which is why you have to do these redundant things it'd be nice if you could just I guess create an object and automatically have uh, you know if there's like a missing method that isn't within your object then it would automatically call the other object but anyway the language even to this day to my knowledge doesn't even have any functionality like that so that's why you end up with a lot of this kind of redundant stuff alright and then I'm gonna go ahead and close all those and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back up because originally probably should have only opened this one I'll just give you a glance at this test drive program so what we can do, I'm just going to kind of obliterate their code, I guess. I'm going to get rid of the package declarations because if we're just doing some little tiny dinking around like this, we don't need all of that kind of stuff. This test driver, though, we should be able to use this untouched as like with unit testing. So we're going to refactor the CRUD out of the other stuff into one other file. And I'll just, I could actually just do it probably with this file. So this is the original, this is like the the first draft implementation without doing any real state pattern or anything. It's just one file, the gumball machine Java. And I'm once again, get rid of this stuff. So you can see it's called gumball machine in this case. And then you have this right here. Here's the code smell. These final static int sold out, which like, especially if you program last century or way early this century um, you'd be familiar with this type of a pattern of creating like instead of an enum going through and just creating a bunch of final static which is kind of just like the way that you have to say it to do a const in Java because final says it's you know basically a const but if it's not static then it can be overridden and all this you know there's room for error so final and static usually go hand in hand to be safe and then it's just a regular int type like in most languages Java's 32-bit even if the virtual machine 64-bit it will still be a 32-bit integer and then you just give it these values you know sold out equals one no quarter so it's really they're really symbolic constants so that instead of having these zero one two three states that down in code won't make a lot of sense we can see oh instead of what is it instead of a two it says has quarter here so that that's an improvement over nothing but it also can be unsafe especially in larger programs 
you start having a namespace thing so you need to prefix all of these like machine like putting this in front of everything uh, we need to do something like this to make sure that it's prefixed so that if we have a lot of um, these type of symbolic const sort of things floating around that you know if there happens to be two called sold for you know the machine itself being sold or a gumball being sold for instance I don't know whatever your imagination can uh, imagine then it would be safer to prefix that like I said in a large program so what Java does is it allows you to do something more like this to namespace it with the enum sort of like a class so that covers that aspect of it but another primary thing is that when we're comparing these like if I were to compare say machine has quarter and then there's some other one called like gumball has quarter or something if I accidentally confuse those two using the old-fashioned way like like I was saying like this then it could still say oh yeah it you know it the case is true it has a quarter or whatever because all it's doing is comparing that number in the background so with the Java thing since it's an actual class it will compare the actual classes I don't want to get try and get too deep for one because I'll probably screw stuff up and not say the right terminology and for two I haven't even programmed like this I was just checking my records at since 2021 like this time 2021 roughly so it's been two years and this is a refresher for me as well but anyway I want to show the power of enums because this is not shown in most of the Java documentation you have to sort of dig a layer or two deeper it's in the Java language specification is where you're gonna find the kind of details about the enum that I'm about to show you let's see here so right now the latest version of Java is Java 21 but I mean you can go back to like Java 7 or 8 and the uh, documentation should be virtually identical it just won't mention sealed or things like that that are new but you can just type JLS 21 to get the newest LTS Java language specification so there's the PDF which that's handy there should be that's it doesn't it's not showing the other one but there's also an HTML one but anyway they have their pros and cons like the HTML one the codes a little easier to read but for some reason which is really strange the uh, you can see more of the text on the screen it's like they have it the formatting's bad on the HTML version if you try and have a small screen space like I'm doing especially right now I have it in 720p to record this video okay so if we go down the language spec to 8.9 right here enum classes and click on that that's what we want it's running extra slow because it's in a virtual machine and I'm making a screencast alright enum classes da 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 a bunch of technical stuff you probably don't care about so I'll scroll down it so yeah see there's the sealed you won't see the sealed and non sealed in the um, older stuff but other than that those two terms I think this is identical Noom class has no instances other than those defined by its enum constants. Um, I'm just going to scroll past a lot of that for a second and show you, like, here's what it looks like. So you've got a noom coin. You can have a penny, a nickel, dime, quarter. That's even overly complex there. Let's see if I go to the J shell. Let's go to user. Um, and then I'll go to the head first. Just make sure I'm in the right folder. SRC. And state. All right, for now, I'll just do J shell. I'll probably take a second to fire up just to be able to show you a quick example of a enum. So I could just say enum um, 
count whatever it's arbitrary and then one actually <laughs> let's do uh, ABC and then go A B C okay there it is now if we do um, what can we say here like state we can create a state variable so we'll call it in the newer Java's you can just say var and it will uh, determine what type the literal type you're trying to use or if you want to keep it like whatever old school style we can explicitly say this is an ABC type we're gonna call it state that's a name we're making up and then that state is gonna be equal to ABC dot B okay there it is so anyway that's sort of how and then if we type in state we can see that it's equal to B we could change state equal to ABC dot C and then check it and it's C so you get the idea it's similar to saying like you know you have some int called like n equals one or I don't know I'm having trouble trying to think it's probably been almost it's been a while since I did a even a screencast so that's why I'm not charging any money just kidding gumball all right so there's the gumball stuff we're in that folder now that's kind of the way I prefer to code just more raw dog style oh right, well, there we go of course now they have a simpler one so there's a whole enum right there that's like the shortest version of something you might use and it will automatically call that one zero that one one two three and if you call it as a two string it will actually print that as a string depending on which state it's in so to speak um, yeah and then so they have just a main here and they're doing a for each loop and this is one of the special methods there's values there's value of and there's like one or two others there's just a very few um, methods that you care about like that so by calling season that enum dot values it gives you an array of all of them so then you can do the for each the for enhanced loop on it as s print as s and then you can see down here that uh that will effectively call values I believe automatically converts them to strings don't quote me on any of this and here's another situation too which is more of a code smell because a switch statement case statement that is effectively a, a fancy if statement right maybe a little cleaner to read in a lot of circumstances but anytime you have a conditional like that it's a code smell so this can help by using this system you can practically eliminate um, if statements and if you are using ifs or switches then that should tell you hey you're probably taking the wrong approach and here's what we're gonna get into more is like you can see this is an enum but then for each thing after it there's another set of curly braces followed by a method so this one they're obviously mimicking like a calculator and then so if it's in the plus state or using the plus strategy or however you want to think of that whatever terminology um, then it will just call you know it returns a double it's called a val it takes two doubles you know the two numbers to add and then it just that could really be a lambda expression probably but I don't I haven't programmed in Java in so long and I so rarely even use lambdas when I do that I don't recall the, the whether or not we're able to actually use a lambda as a method definition it's probably some trickery to do it but anyway yeah and then they have a main here well they also have abstract which this is one of the bugs whenever I haven't messed with this enum thing that always gets me or it's not a bug I guess but a quote unquote feature so this is like declaring your interface so you can see there's all those enums and um, you know each one you can have multiple methods in each one too but after each extra uh, nested set of curly braces for each enum itself there's a comma just like there was a up wherever right just like up here when it's an expanded version of this so when we come back down here yeah then there's a comma minus whatever all that well 
if you forget this abstract line, then you'll sit here and test your code and it will be like, I can't find an eval method on plus. And it will drive you up the wall until, from, in my case, I had to go review that last code I'd written in 2021. And it's, I, it's some gnarly code too. And I was having to dig through it. And then I saw this abstract line down there and I was like, that's what it is. So this abstract line basically makes it more of like a public declaration that these other things are in here. And it also helps enforce that these are sticking to the contract. So these abstract lines down here, you know, there's only one in this case, but however many you use, that will replace the, uh, that will replace this, this whole thing. These are all the same as like abstract declarations, right? So instead of that, oh, where'd we go? Instead of that, we have this. So anyway. And the thing is too, you can also, instead of doing abstract, you can do like a default method there that like say for plus, we didn't have any methods listed. Then if we actually did a default implementation down here, then it would just call that one for any of these uh, cases where, or states or whatever where it doesn't have it. So that's pretty handy too. So it's one or the other on that. And then they even did a main in here because this is, to my knowledge, don't quote me again, it's a, everything's final static or roughly speaking should be or at least considered to be. So in that case, we've got a static context here of main and that all works. But as far as I know, even though these are instances, I think they're just singleton instances. If you try and call, uh, you know, if you're trying to declare some instance variable outside of here, as far as I know, it would error out and tell you, you know, you're trying to access an instance, whatever member from a static context. So one of the, the pros and the cons about it is by this sort of thing, there's a it they get rid of a lot of redundancy of having to type static in front of everything and all that kind of stuff so that's nice because there's less of that cruft but at the same time it makes it inconsistent with everything else in the language virtually because you don't have those terms where you're like oh if this was that I would expect to see that you know qualifier there and it's just not there so it can mess with you on that level all right, and then all they're doing is they're just parsing command line arguments to get the two numbers, and then uh, what for each operation value print that. So it's uh, printing the x value, then it's printing um, op, which is this, so it will be plus, and then some space, and the y value, and an equals, and then it's actually evaluating them. It's calling this eval to get the, the uh, calculation but anyway that and then this is a more complicated one I haven't really entirely wrapped my mind around this one I don't know if I want to or not but this is stuff that you're not gonna see the only other place that I can think of that you're even gonna see the hints at this kind of stuff is in effective Java by Joshua Block that book which if you're a Java programmer I highly recommend that that's like every Java programmer should have that book right by their side Okay, so without further ado, let's get back in here. Let's get rid of this stuff we don't need. There's the test drive program. We're going to leave that. We'll go ahead and um, file, save as. Um, we'll rename the old one so we have a little backup just in case. We'll just dash BKP. No, I don't want it to compile with anything, so I'll call it bkp like that yes I want to save that and then I'll save this one under the original name so we're back to like nothing happened okay so there's all our states there's the initial state count gumball so the other option of course the really super generic option is to create a bunch of these if statements instead of having individual classes for each state this is what you might do if you just built it up from the ground up without thinking about any sort of design patterns and the problem with this is it gets very difficult to read. It's like, okay, at least 
everything's grouped by its uh, method, but inside of each method is just a ton of these, and of course you're probably going to have more logic than a simple print statement in each one, so you could picture each method taking up pages of text probably, and then it's like has quarter, and it's hard to sort of, at least with this editor and most editors, it's hard to pick out these words of which one it is and what's going on with all that. So that's kind of nasty. And I'm trying to think if I want to just start a new file. Maybe I'll just start a new file. We'll come here, say uh, Java, and I'll just start going at it. So what we're going to do since the normal enum is, like I said, it's like a static final type of deal. But we, because of the gumball machine, we need some instance uh, type of a thing, right? We need a, a one-off object that's going to represent, it's going to save the state and all those things. So you don't really want to be saving any kind of state to like an enum. Even if it is possible, it'd be very hacky. So an enum supposed to be like what it's taking the place of, of those. It's just giving more power to the constants, which should remain constant. Um, but that being said, we do still need that in place of the gumball machine class. So here's the gumball machine class. And we don't care about any of that. We're going to effectively get rid of that. We do care about this, though. So that's its state. So I'll just copy that straight over. Excuse me. And s yeah, so this is going to have an enum in it. So I'm going to leave room for the enum which I'm going to make static so that there's, since it is static already, so just in case the compiler can't figure it out, that way it knows that, you know, we just need one copy of this enum class. No matter how many instances of our gumball machine we make, they can all refer to this same thing because it's effectively just a bunch of constant source code. So static enum, and then we're going to call this state. And for now, I'm just going to leave it empty but I just want a little placeholder for it. Okay, so there's that. And why is it asking me what to say this as? Oh, is this a whole different thing? Okay, I'm just gonna overwrite this. See what it does. Don't check for updates to that file anymore. I'm gonna control Z. All right. So yeah, we have this state, and since it's going to be part of this thing, this enum now, I can just say, hey, it's going to be state dot sold out. So the nice thing that namespace is it, and it makes it a little bit more readable too. Like, just in case we didn't know that was a state or something. Doubling down on that int count. Normally, I like to make my member variables be like m state like this and m count. In this case, the way that I'm going to program it, that's going to look in a couple spots, it's going to look a little funky, but that's good because it's a co but what I'm going to be doing eventually is I'm going to directly access these member variables from another area and it would read smoother if they did just say, you know, like gumball.state or whatever. But it's going to say gumball.m state and whenever we'll get there you'll see I like that it's another reason I even like it is because it makes it look tacky in those areas it it lets that code smell really waft through the air because we shouldn't be directly accessing properties from outside of the directly outside the object right so it sort of serves to highlight that as well but otherwise, the one other option too is to be able to, is in a lot of places, not here, but in every other place to say like this dot count, which is optional to specifically refer to count as this. But the thing is, then I end up with like in spots in where I'm just using a big splatter of these variables, these member variables, then it's like it looks so tacky to have this everywhere, especially if you're trying to read it in a situation where you don't have good syntax highlighting. So once again, 90% of the time, this is the best way to do it. Okay, so I'm coming back down here. Now this is the uh, constructor for the gumball machine, and it's taking in a count, and it's saying, it's setting its member variable count to that, 
provided count. That's what this this is doing here. This is just making it distinct from the one that's passed in. And then it's testing if count. It's not doing this count though, it's doing this one effectively. But they should be the same in theory. Um, is greater than zero, then the state equals no quarter. So it doesn't equal sold out. But you can see initially they put the state at sold out. Like, so if you just create a gumball machine, and it's going to assume that it's empty, basically. Yeah, because it's, it's going to have a default count of zero there. So, I mean, that would all be design decisions depending on your program, if that's exactly how you want to lay it out or not. I'll go ahead and uh, we'll leave it like this. I'm just going to copy this over. And then, I'm, of course, I've got to change this to M count. M count. And then down here, I'm going to just, I feel like it's a little bit better practice to do that. And then, of course, this is going to be M state. You don't even have to change these. I probably shouldn't have, just to make things really easy. I probably should have just blasted through it without doing that, but whatever. If you're watching this, you probably care about stepping up your code skills at least a tiny bit, I would hope. Alright, so then there's this insert quarter, and what they've done here, I'm just going to try and do this on the fly, because there's a lot of redundancy. So you could technically pull each one of these over, right? So we're going to have our states. Let's go ahead and copy these over. I'm going to copy them into the enum, and then I'm going to get rid of all the junk. I'm going to put a comma, get rid of all this junk. I'm going to put a comma and keep doing the same thing. All right, and then even if I was just going to have these, it's always preferable unless it's just for some reason not tacky, but when you're on the fence about it, go for this vertical alignment. You know, if you're, like I said, if you're on the fence about it, that's always the best way to go because otherwise if they're all on one line, it, you just see in the long run, it's way easier to read stuff like this but if this was going down like 10 pages worth and you weren't always having to go through and look at them or something uh, maybe you would want to make them more compressed but anyway there's that and then there could be this there optionally you can have these and it's sort of tricky after this last one I should have a semicolon I'm gonna save it so what in this case what this does is for the remember the enum is separate the enum this is like a nested class this is effectively a nested static class in here so kind of think about this area as its own thing and this other stuff is the stuff that's using it right um so in other words i could construct this state thing well it constructs itself but as a static class right so when it does that initialization at some point early on if we wanted to, we could pass values, like we could pass a zero or, you know, some string in here or something. Like, we could do just like you would with regular constructors. And then that enum could have a default constructor in here. It could have a, you know, state. But the thing with these is they're always supposed to be private because it's just called during static initialization. It's not supposed to ever be called by the user. So, but you could do that and then say, you know, like int i or whatever and, you know, do some stuff like that. But for our purposes, we don't need to do that. But what we will be doing is using the curly braces to actually break it out into real legit blocks of code here. So I'll just start to do that. I guess I could copy these. All right, so now I can just come in and just hit the enter key right here. Oh, if it's not going to indent for me, fine. I can do that, and I can come over here and grab like insert quarter or whatever. And I'm not going to grab the public. I don't like putting public unless I absolutely need it. So we could do like that, and there now we effectively have an insert quarter type of a method in there excuse me 
But before I get too far along in there, what I was going to say is if we look at the redundancy here, so like if it already has a quarter, you can't insert a quarter. Um, if it's sold out, you can't insert a quarter. If it's in this weird sold state, you can't. I'm actually going to get rid of this sold state because if you come down here, the only time you need it is if it has a quarter and you call turn crank, then it says you turn the crank and then it dispenses a gumball, right? A gumball comes rolling out of the slot right here. But I think this code's a little bit like it's not that great. And at first I was like, why are they changing the state before they call another action? Which was weird. So technically it's still in, you know, it's within the code of this previous state. It's switching its state, which is almost like counterintuitive, I feel like. It's not keeping it simple and consistent as it could be. Then it calls dispense, right? And the way that I refactor my stuff is I have it, I don't have it set its own state because you know all this stuff especially because it's all in a static type of environment so it to have it I just have it return the state I feel like that's more testable and just in general a little bit cleaner way of doing it so that would screw that up because right here I would effectively change that to return sold and then it would never call dispense and otherwise, I would return sold after calling dispense, but dispense needs to be called on sold, so you end up in that pickle. And it's like, okay, well, how about instead of that, if we come down here, if state sold, da 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 da, all this stuff, and we just take this code and slam it up in there, and just put it in here, and get rid of this whole dispense call, and get rid of this whole sold state, because that's the only thing the sold state does. You can see it doesn't do any of this other stuff. It just, like, literally, um, does this so I'll even just do that right now so we already know it's if state sold so we'll control X on that I'll get rid of the whole state just to make it visualize better we can get rid of all that and paste that in so that would be fine and then if it's the last gumball it will turn to a sold out state and if it's um Otherwise, it will just go to the no quarter state and be waiting for another quarter to distribute another gumball. So that's less code. It's always nice to delete code, I feel like, when I'm working on stuff, especially when I'm building anything out and it starts getting big and I'm like, oh, no, it's... I worry if I walk away from this code for a month and I come back, I'll never be able to figure out what's going on and then go in and make some changes and just start knocking, getting rid of lines of code, and it's, like, beautiful. Now I can tell what this module does or this file, whatever you want to call it, does again. All right, and then of course we're not gonna really run this one, but I should have probably run it. But it, there are things kind of confusing anyway of what it says and how you have to go through and line everything up. Okay, so anyway, back to the first idea again, maybe I'll actually do it now that I keep talking about it, is all these things. So here's insert quarter, and it says if it has a quarter, you can't insert another quarter. Um, if it has no quarter, then it switches to state have quarter and then says you inserted a quarter, which I think, once again, it should say that before it switches the state. It's just more intuitive, and plus if you're returning state, it flows better. You have to do that. Um, can insert a quarter, and you can insert a quarter. So there's a lot of redundancy. It's just like slightly different language between these, like, oh, you haven't inserted a quarter versus you can't insert a quarter or whatever. So as we go, we'll just get rid of that. So insert quarter the only one that matters is uh, no quarter so we'll get this let's take it all so there's less typing that was a no quarter right that's the problem with the if statements once you really come in and start messing with them they when it's super simple it looks kind of apparent but then it's like oh wait which one was I in I'm in if it has no quarter, that's the one I care about. Okay, so I'll go to no quarter, paste that in there, get rid of the public part. Because if you don't have public, you're in Java, all your stuff's going to default to package private, which is actually a fourth qualifier because there's public, private, um, protected, and then package private, right? 
And package private is honestly so ideal so much of the time, but you never hardly hear anybody talk about it. They feel like they always got to put like private or public on it. And it's like, put it on package private. Then if you didn't write the code, it's hidden. But if you wrote the code, then it's not hidden from you, you know? So I feel like 99% of the time for me, that makes sense. And then otherwise, if it doesn't, you just go refactor and add some, you know, specifically make something public or private or whatever. Make it public if you want people who are writing their own code outside of your code to be able to use it, in most cases. And make it private if you don't, if your code's getting big, your package is getting big, and you're worried about collisions or something. But otherwise, less is more, right? Okay, so we're going to do that. Then we'll indent this over so it's lined up under there. This one is lining up with that, so we need to give it a closing brace here. Oops. Which that lines up with the if, and then we need one to close out the function as well, or the method. All right, that's all looking good. So if state, so the state now is, we don't have to have that. We know the state is, uh, oh yeah, I just grabbed that because it was in between a bunch of junk that I wanted. So I can get rid of that one. Can get rid of this. And then we can uh, dedent that. Okay, so state equals has quarter. So like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that. Come down here and I'm going to return has quarter. And since I'm in the enum itself, one of the cool things about the Java setup is that it will automatically deduce that, you know, oh, has quarter is not in my immediate local scope. It's not in this scope right here. So then it's going to go to this outer scope and look for it and it's going to find it. And so it will effectively, I could say state dot has quarter. That's effectively the same thing. Okay, and then if it didn't find it in there, it would even go out to this class and try and find it. All right. And that should do it. So the only thing I need to do is change this return type from that to it's going to return a state. Which any of these, are, and then the fact is that insert quarter, I'm going to come down here just after the end of the enum, just after these, you know, the enum uh, constants. They call them constant classes, I think, because that's what they are effectively. And I'm going to put in that sort of uh, abstract, right? Abstract. For now, later we'll go and make it an actual implementation. But just so stuff compiles, abstract. And it's got to be the same interface effectively. Okay, so there it goes. Now all the other ones will automatically just call a nothing method, a method that does nothing when they get this because we don't care. If it already has a quarter, we don't want a quarter. Um, that sold state is bunk. We're getting rid of that. And the other thing about the sold state, the way it was, if you notice, the only thing it did was... Um, they changed the state just to call one method, which we were able to easily inline, and that's it. So it's not a true state in my opinion. I mean, if you needed it, if you needed to refactor and add that kind of a state, that's one thing, but just to have it up front, it's a transitional state because we can never access that state. It's never a resting state that we can call into. It's only called by one other state one time. You know what I mean? So it's complete. It's mostly bogus. Sort of a code smell. I mean, a big time code smell, honestly. All right. So that means this one needs to be a semicolon. All right. And then if I'm doing this where I'm actually turning these into little classes, I like to add an extra space here just to make it easier to read between them like that. And being the extra like nested classes, they are, uh, they only need just what they need to differentiate themselves. So they shouldn't be huge. We want to generalize everything down here, either abstract or as a... Actually, abstract will require all of these to have them. So I'll need to change... I think it would error out. So I, no matter what, I'm going to need to uh, 
before it will let me compile, make an implementation. Okay, so we'll jump back over here. We might as well do that while we're on it. So it says you can't insert another quarter. You insert a quarter. You can't insert. Please wait. We're already giving you a gumball. So I like the idea of you can't insert a quarter. That seems like the pretty general idea. So we'll change that from that. It's supposed to uh, return a state. Oh, we already got that. And then get rid of that. You can't insert a quarter. Oh, so one thing we can do too, instead of doing system out everywhere, we can do uh, an import static, which is often considered a code smell. But in this case, having system outs everywhere is honestly a code smell. So this doesn't hurt any more than that, I don't feel like. As long as you're not using out as, you know, you don't collide with that name, we can say java.lang.system.out and import that. Sometimes it's tempting to just try and do system.out, but we forget that Java's automatically looking in Java Lang for us for a lot of that kind of stuff. All right, and then instead of doing shorten that down just a little bit like that all right so that covers all that it has the state of um, where's the one place it changes to has quarter and no quarter so no quarter changes to has quarter so I'm gonna get rid of this just to like clean this up so it's easier to see what we've already got we've already got that that we've already got all our states get rid of those we're not even caring about the package name right now so eject quarter is the next one so eject quarter looks like it matters on has quarter so we'll come back over here has quarter void eject quarter and what's that gonna do we're gonna give them back the quarter they just put in there. So I think of this like on those old style gumball machines, you kind of just use your thumb, I think, to pull the quarter out if you haven't turned it, but I'm pretending like there's a little mechanical button you push and it sort of like pops the quarter back up to you, I guess, to make it make more sense. And this one is the right order with the state on the bottom, but instead of doing that, we're going to return a state because void's bad unless void means this function either does nothing or you know does something and doesn't store any state anywhere or it's side affecting which means it's changing the state of something that it's not returning that state so it's ambiguous it's like well what are you doing are you manipulating some object secretly why not just return that object all that kind of stuff so it's less apparent less testable it voids just mostly a code smell in most places so there's that and then the other thing is that we're not manipulating state we don't have a state inside of this enum because once again it's more of like a final static thing so but out here we do want to manipulate this state right so we're gonna re since we're gonna call into these enum functions methods <laughs> excuse me what we'll do is we'll just return, if the state changes, we'll return that state back out to ourselves. And otherwise, we'll just return this, the this keyword, which means, which will be, you know, whichever one of these instances it happens to be on. So, that one's going to return has quarter. This one's going to return no quarter, just like that. Yeah, and otherwise, if we did... um. Where's one? Is that insert quarter? What was this from uh, that thing we deleted? Oh no, I forgot. We're outside the nooms. There's the semicolon. I thought that was left over. I didn't close it off. Oh, and I got to do that out. That must have been where I ran off. Always good to do the print line too, not just regular old print because print line will send a carriage return and flush the buffer 
And if you don't do that, if you've done a fair amount of programming, you, you've probably run into situations where it's like, why isn't it doing saying the thing that I told it to print, or why is it printing these things out of order? You've got to flush the buffer. Otherwise, it, in a lot of cases, it can be buffering output, which makes it faster for programs to run that have a lot of console output, because console output, if you're literally like flushing every line, it can drastically by huge orders of magnitude slow down the program but in simple little programs definitely make sure you print that line and uh, or at any point where you think like I want all the text up to this point to be flushed and printed make sure you have some explicit type of command that will flush the buffer alright so that's the default one this is something where it does, it's a little bit tacky, you know, the way that these enums work because I don't think they're the easiest thing to read. I'm glad that the style, the convention calls for the all caps on these because that at least makes them stick out. But yeah, then we get down to here and it's like, oh, what did I just have that method floating around for? All right. And of course, this enum could be outside of this class, but since it's so tied to this class and the simple case, and not going to be used by any classes, other classes in the foreseeable future. I'm just going to leave it nested for now. That allows a l save a little bit of code here and there. All right. So I guess one by one, there's the insert quarter. That the insert quarter for this one's going to fall back to this one, and then it looked like I start on eject quarter there. So. I'll look down, you have an insert, sorry, you turn the crank, you can't eject. You have an insert a quarter yet. So I'll make it say unable to eject quarter. So down here under this one, does it ever, it should change the state, right? Because this one right here does. So since this one doesn't, they all have to be consistent, this one will too. Eject quarter. You gotta remember that R right here. Oh, oh wow. I'm using the um, an un whatever their trial VM. I'm just gonna have to fire it back up and go from there. I forgot about that. I thought my whole system was shutting down for some reason. This virtual machine just expired. Said I had so many days left. I almost thought it was getting stuck on how many days it said were left because it seemed like it must have been my imagination. I could try rearming it one more time, but I don't know if I have any left. The only bad thing is they just shut down every hour if um if they're not see down here it says enterprise evaluation expired but anyway did, is our program should be saved pretty recently go to file recent no recent files that's not good gumball machine and then we need to open that other one that original and I'll put that on Java so it's the right kind of syntax highlighting. Insert quarter. So it looks like it just didn't get that eject quarter one. I can just get a head start here. Eject quarter. And then this one's going to say Unable to eject quarter. Yeah, I was talking, I think, about misspelling quarters, easy to do. And that's not fun. And then it should be expecting a state, I believe. It's been so long since I've done any significant programming in Java, I can't even remember if it automatically does a null. But I'll go ahead and say return this, which I was wanting to illustrate as well. Oop. Um, so return this will return itself. It will return 
I believe whatever state the this happens to be in so if they call say this is eject quarter this if they call it on no quarter this will be the no quarter but then it will just since it won't find that method in here uh oh it's frozen up um, since it won't find that method in here it will come out and it will call this one and then it will return it with that instance tied to this or whichever one it happens to call if it was in you know sold out it would return that one so this is kind of universal there and that's a good practice in object oriented programming is to basically return this or at least some object but especially the same object as much as possible like the vast majority of time and that allows chaining in object oriented programming which I am a huge fan of I know some people like Bob Martin aren't because it um is supposedly hard to test but I in my limited experience I have never found it to be hard to test it's way easier to read and reason about in my opinion most of the time and it's one of the beauties of object oriented programming all right so there's that and this one needs to return this too all right so that should cover the eject cases because the only time you want to eject is when it has a quarter but it hasn't been cranked around yet all right so we can get rid of that wait we have insert quarter right insert quarter and eject quarter insert and eject oh yeah I didn't save any of these changes out here so all this stuff's gonna still be here which is fine we can just knock out what we know we have alright turn crank um, doesn't matter for sold, doesn't matter for no quarter, doesn't apply to sold out. It only applies to has quarter. So let's uh, let's copy that code. So it's void turn crank. It applies to this guy, which I keep forgetting to close the functions off. And that's going to be Is that what that's called? Yeah, turn crank. All right, and then they're going to that sold state, which we don't want. So what we're gonna do is come back over here, go to that sold state, and get that code that we did care about, which is all that and only that and otherwise the sold state is worthless so where did that go we can get rid of dispense and sold state and just replace them inline that code right there indent it over so count this is going to become m count I'm trying to think of how I did that before so we're going to return the state so we don't need to pass in the state, but we do need to pass in the count. And what we'll do is we'll pass in just the whole gumball machine as machine. And that's better. That way, instead of being like, oh, I just need the count right now, right? Well, what if we extend this program later and we want more stuff from the gumball machine? So by sending that whole machine is literally just as much work on the back end of the compiler behind the scenes or the machine you know run, at runtime it's just as much work it's literally just like a 32-bit number in either case so it's like why not send the 32-bit number that references this object in memory instead of just one variable and that will lead to less necessity to recompile other modules or whatever in the future all that kind of stuff always when you're passing around values for the most part try and lean towards in this day and age lean towards passing around objects if we're passing around primitives that's a code smell in this day and age it used to be in decades prior that was the way to do it because it was more optimal you know and especially a lot of us were more trained to like regular old procedural programming or whatever you want to call it and 
that we were just used to kicking around primitives, maybe structures or something, bags of data, so to speak. But now it's like all these systems, like this Java since like going on close to 20 years ago, 15 years ago now, it can create so many little objects so quick. Same thing with Python. Python is, <laughs> it's funny because even the primitives in Python are literally objects. So it's like, People think, oh, I need to, you know, this is a slow interpreted language. For one, it's compiled a lot like Java. and But for two, it's going to be an object anyway. Even if you just try and use a primitive, you're using an object. So you might as well make that an object that's actually extendable and to your purposes. Of course, don't go way out of your way. Like, I pretty much say, don't make everything an object, but consider making everything an object. So... And of course, at the end of the day, too, just like how, uh, you know, in like a pure programming world, it's like, oh, you don't ever want to manipulate state and all that. But at some point you have to. Right. So that's the idea is don't go around manipulating state every little place. Wait till the last minute, the last mile. And the same thing with primitives. Wait till that last minute or that last mile to convert, you know, to have some primitive like a string or an integer representation of some object. So in this case, we're going to bring in a gumball machine, which a lot of times in the state pattern you want to do. You want to, you know, be passing around. You saw in the old ones what they had done. Well, not in this one, but in that one that was more um, object-oriented. Might as well dart over there real quick. In this one, it's more object-oriented. It's a gumball machine, and then, where's the thing? See, it's passing this. When it creates all of these, um, so here's the declaration, but they're actually not fully defined yet, and then it comes down here, and it actually, in the constructor, fully defines them. It's passing a copy of itself right here into those constructors. So then if we jump back over here and pick one, sold out state, and then we see the public sold out state constructor, which they can do a public constructor because they're not using an enum. Here it is. They're getting it, and then they're calling it a gumball machine. When they got that this keyword, they're turning it into this. I don't know why this thing won't select good. That. And then they're saying, hey, save that to this. <laughs> this one sold out state's gumball machine right here. So that's what all that talk and code is about is just to save that um, to this instance right here. But we're not so much doing instances like they are. Our only one instance we have for the most part is uh, just the gumball machine. So anyway, we're passing in, instead of passing it into a constructor, we're just passing it into the method when we call it. So that's something that our method, this particular method, and when in doubt, you know, if you wanted to have kind of future proof it, and if you were going with this sort of angle of attack on it, you could just make them all just like we're returning a state from all of them. And if we don't have a state to return, where's one that's not returning? So void insert quarter and a sold out. We're actually going to get rid of that. Um, yeah, but if we didn't have that, we'd return this, you know, and you'll see why that pattern is especially useful in a minute here. Okay, now I have to remember what I was just doing. That Okay, I'm passing in the gumball to this one, machine. So now we can come down here and prefix this with machine, and this is where it would have been it would have been more readable to just say machine dot count equals count minus one, right? But I was like, oh, I, I like to do m count. And so it's machine m count, which lets us, that's where it's kind of tacky and it's sort of a code smell because it, it, and it highlights that because instead of letting it be really readable like machine count, it's like machine m count. And that's letting us know, hey, we're not accessing like, it almost should be like a getter, right? Like machine dot, but we can't assign to a getter, so this wouldn't work. But if we wanted to deal with that value, or it should be, um, actually, to be completely realistic, it should be a setter, and it should be equal to something like that, right? 
So that would be one way to do it, but that's more code. Um, but just so you know, that's that's really the more ideal way to do it. But then that's still even a code smell because it's a setter, a getter and a setter. And to me, getters and setters are kind of like one of those code smells that's right along the side, uh, the side, like a sibling to primitive obsession because we really, the objects were thinking too much in the technical domain instead of like the the more real world domain by doing getters and setters you know so then it's almost like well you might as well just assign to the variable you know directly even though that limits extendability at least with the setter you can do error checking and you know you have that layer shimmed in there that provides you a, a, it's a lot better to do it that way but there's a trade-off you know what I mean it's code complexity so the way I'm doing it, the way I choose to do it, is just to uh, leave it nice and stinky like that. And then that was, I'll just say, like that. Good old shorthand. Decrement the count by one and save it to machine.mcount. So that will manipulate, you know, that will side effect this thing right here. And that's part of object oriented programming too, is not to be so scared about some of that stuff I mean and if you're watching this video in some place where you can add comments if you've got stuff to add to this please do you know or if you know some better trade-off or something all right so that's doing that and then down here at the bottom we need to return the state so let's see what we got here system out print line we could still leave system out it's not going to error out but I might as well since I imported that static thing um, you turned a gumball comes rolling out the slot there's now one less gumball in the machine and what does it say if count okay that needs to be changed to machine dot m count compares to zero then I see this one highlighting too up here if it compares to zero then say oops out of gumballs which I think them saying oops for beginners reading that book especially it's like it's not oops out of gumballs it's not like we tried to get a gumball out of an empty machine which that oops to me implies but whatever that's the language they use maybe I'll just change it to out of gumballs alright and then the state they're saying is sold out but we're not setting that variable once again we're just returning it and the same thing down here else return no quarter okay so no matter what there's a return statement there and then we can do that to close that off get rid of that strenuous space and if your compiler complains that there's not necessarily a for sure return I feel like maybe the older Java's used to do that you can just get rid of this else and uh, and do that because then if it matches this is statement it will just jump right out and otherwise it will fall out to that one but I'll just leave it like they had it okay and then that one lines up with that state one alright so we'll save that hop back over here that was turn crank the only one that mattered was that one dispensing and do we have a default for it takes a gumball machine no matter what and it's going to say what like we'll look at the other ones as a reference turning twice you turned let's make it say can't turn crank And then it needs a state return, so we're going to return this. All right, let's get rid of that since we know that should be good enough. So then dispense, once again, no gumball dispense, no gumball dispense, you need to pay first. Otherwise, it's this. 
If state equals sold, a gumball comes rolling out the slot. So we'll jump back over to sold state. Oh, we don't have a sold state. That's right, so did we already put this in here? A gumball comes rolling out the slot. Yeah, we've already got that. That's the one we were just messing with. I should have known that. And what did we pick? Can't dispense gumball? Can't turn crank. Otherwise, it's not even going to hit any of these because you, that would just be a coding error, like straight up. Refill. Okay, the difference here for refill is this is one that we're not going to copy into the enum because it's dealing with state. We're going to refill the count. So to bury that in the enum would be kind of pointless. And we're not even going to put it as a default method out here either because that would just be too much talking back and forth to get that to happen. So down here under the constructor, just paste it out there like that. Bring that back like that. Public void refill. And then instead of this count, it's going to be m count. And instead of state, it's going to be m state. And no quarter won't work because we're now outside of the enum. So even though it works shorthand inside of the enum, outside of it, I don't think it should work. So we just go ahead and tell it specifically state enum or uh, state no quarter because then it will come in here to look for it. It needs to dig down instead of up. All right, and that's a void. So in this situation too, it would be better to return, you know, this here instead of a void because then they could chain it and say, oh, refill and uh, insert coin, you know, if they wanted to all as one object-oriented sentence, so to speak. Anyway, so we got rid of that one. That's cool. We can delete it there. Now we've got the two string method. And that's it. Cool. Okay, so I'll just cut that out and I'll come here and put that two string is going to go down here. Outside of a noom as well. Why is do I not have a closer for my actual full on class? All right, that should do it. Okay, and so what they did here looks pretty gnarly, and it doesn't have to be this gnarly. It's sort of like design performance trade-off, but they're um, doing a two-string method, which these enum constants actually have, and they just have a, a very small one. What they'll do is see how it says like for each one of these down here, um, if state they have this. <laughs> Total code smell, all these if else is like, ugh. There's so much code that could be way more readable. Um, and plus, this should go in the thing itself. These, this if else statement shouldn't be out here, right? Like, all the sold out stuff should go in here and sold out. And whatever's common between all these should go just below them right here with all this other stuff. But outside of here, that's why we end up with this if else is this that's telling you like you're trying to do something that you shouldn't be doing right here. Um, so if it has no quarter, it's waiting for a quarter. All these. What I thought looking at it was okay. I could just transfer all this into the thing override to string, just like we did with the other functions. That would be an option to put it in a new. And then, um, you know, put these little customized phrases or whatever in there. But I thought, you know what, if you just look at the state and read it, you know, because the way they have it say is they have it say, uh, Mighty Gumball Inc., Java Enabled Standing Gumball number 2004, which I think was when that book was originally written, first draft. And uh, inventory count, if counts, uh, you know, not equal to one, then add an S and pluralize it. So that will work for zero and all the bigger cases besides one. And then machine is sold out. Well, that's identical to that one. Machine is sold out. So the enum reads perfect in that. Machine is no quarter. 
So then I thought, well, what if we just put machine and then it's like sold out, waiting for quarter, waiting for turn. You know what I mean? It's like the machine state. And I thought, well, instead of even doing that, what if we put like machine and then just say the state? You know what I mean? Like it will do the state. But that, I don't think that will literally do a two string. So we have to do a two string there and then do a two lower case so it's not all capitalized like that and then also replace that um, underscore with just a space like that and then that will make it to where so it will say machine and then it will, like for one we don't even have this state in there anymore um, machine has quarter no quarter sold out so that's good enough and it's way less of this code but like I said otherwise if I wasn't gonna just compact it to this general case I would just come up here and you know maybe if there were a few commons or whatever I'd come in below the semicolon at the end of the enums and I would just add you know some general default uh, method for it and otherwise any ones that needed specific phrasing I would just a two string inside of here for them but there's that then we've got this whole idea of a string buffer which yeah it I mean which is a string builder effectively it's a thread safe string builder um, which is a builder pattern that's a whole nother pattern implemented behind the scenes I'm not going to get into right now but I thought man it just looks so ugly and is it really a performance problem yet and like they say you know right um, get it working first then measure, then tune, right? Well, I've already been down this road, and I guess maybe if you're using a computer that's like a thousand years old or something, it might be slightly more efficient to do it this way. But we're just combining a few strings, and plus all these pluses in here of string concatenation, that really ruins a lot of efficiency that you're otherwise going to pull out of having this string builder. And the only other major case I could think of off the top of my head right now um, for a string builder is if you're wanting to have a string effectively seem like it's more um, mutable you know you want to actually mutate a value without having to generate a new string and then return a copy of that new string and you know deal with those patterns so anyway I'm just gonna get rid of some code that I don't think's entirely necessary so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna return one long string you know and all I gotta do is stick a plus at the end of it That. switch this with the plus just put a bunch of pluses and honestly more than a few pluses it does get inefficient and there's like a string concatenation method I forget what it's called but that I believe is faster if you do that if you're worried about string optimization otherwise just look up Java string optimization or whatever what I usually do is at least put these pluses, I get rid of the space between them and the quote because then it's not as spacey and it's easier to read. And plus we're doing string concatenation that so that uh, plus operator is being overridden and turned into like a string method instead of an addition, you know, a mathematical type of a method. So I look at it as a single operator, like the plus against a quote like that. Anyway, that's just something I do in all those languages. And then this right here, we can actually inline this to count. Um, and then we can say, if it's that, then append, then put this S, drop this S here. Otherwise, just drop an empty quote. And we can do that. And, uh, Is that a tab? Oh yeah, there's tabs in these files. I forgot. I was wondering why I was jumping around. So I'm going to convert tabs to spaces. All right, and then this last line will be machine, m straight two string, lowercase, and then it's going to append that last little new line on there. 
that will be plus plus the new line and that should do it right let me double check this so we've got that with the plus plus inventory count plus we could even pull this up here something like that might be a little long on the like I said when in doubt should probably go more of the uh, vertical stacking instead of the horizontal but whatever for this situation I'm just gonna do this so this should be roughly the equivalent of course there's that conditional block that was at the end that was really gross looking I just got rid of that and replaced that with that whole thing which eff effectively just um, makes the state lowercase and pits it after the machine thing which we're about to see because I think this is test worthy I imagine it will screw up we'll close this one without saving it I'm going to open a command window and we'll go okay we're already there so downloads um, All right, what do we got here? We're supposed to go into a regular old gumball. I think it's where I saved it. Okay, so then there's that test drive, right? So um, gumball, let's open that in here and take a quick gander at it. So this is what it's gonna run. It will know, since we're not using a um, package, it uses something called the default package one of those little nifty hidden things in Java that's like whatever just I don't know there's pros and cons to it and everything but for simple little just few files in the same directory I just prefer to do this so by doing that we don't even have to import this uh, gumball machine like normally you'd have that import line you have your big long package line with all your directory structure has to line up perfectly and then you import this other class and then you can start using it and so on and so forth and you got to do that in every file and otherwise you just get rid of all the package and import statements if you're going to keep it simple like we are here and it will just know like hey look in the local directory and see if there's a gumball class in there a gumball machine class and if there is bring it in and use it like automatically import it and that's what it's going to do so anyway Gumball machine test drive. It's got the public static void main and doesn't care about the arguments. It's going to instantiate a new gumball machine with five gumballs. So let's jump back over here. Realizing that outer class, um, we're just importing static to be lazy. And then uh, right here, this gumball machine, remember that this is a nested static class. And this is the outer class that actually can be instantiated. And so we got to come all the way down here, and that basically starts like right around here. And then we have our instance variables because they're not declared static, which is good because if we have 10 gumball machines, we don't want them all to have the same count. You know, if somebody takes a gumball out of one, it shouldn't take it out of all of them. And then we have the constructor method, which is going to take a count. And it's going to go in and do all that. That all looks good. Oh, this state right here looks like it should say state dot no quarter it probably would have complained to us actually let's let it complain just to see and then refill all right so with newer Java if you only have one file and I would say at least since probably Java 11 you can just type Java and then type the name of your thing so we'll just run gumball machine like this and then of course we get machine plus state m straight to stream replace what compilation failure what I forgot a terminating semicolon there okay so even though I'm calling regular old Java it's still trying to run it like it's Java C right so then we'll go back up here um, count oh, okay got a little confused on that one so that count that we passed in is actually machine dot count right so machine dot m count and another thing I can do well here's the reason not to use Java like that because for one we're using multiple files 
But another thing I wanted to see is Java C. You can't run these expanded um, command line flags. I can say x max errors errors and then say one and then do that file. So instead of giving me a whole page of errors, it's just going to give me that one top error that it would have been and then abort back to the command line so it's easier to look at without having to scroll up every time. So on line 51 there's an error, incompatible type, state cannot be converted to an int. So let's go back to line 51. Why aren't my lines showing? All right, it's 51. State, M state. Oh, it's an int. Yeah, because um, I copied it from their code. But we know that this is supposed to be a state. So we can do that. And I just hit the up arrow one time. This is my preferred, the vast majority of the time I'm writing code. I prefer, like, my command line to be fast. My, um which, you know, like if you're using especially Python, the idle, I'll use the idle editor a lot, but I don't like running the code if it has a lot of output to the console in idle because it's slow. So I prefer using like something like command or in Linux, like, you know, some extern bash shell kind of thing. And uh, then I use something lightweight like programmer's notepad because it's just super lightweight, easy to kick around, open files, it's not using a bunch of resources and stuff, and that's what I prefer, and it's so easy just to hop over a command line, and then I can customize my compiles just by typing like a normal human at the command line, and then when I want, I can just hit, you know, just go through that to uh, get the thing I want, I just hit up, or down, or whatever, in Windows it's up and down, it's a little confusing for me, but yeah, and I get that custom command line, so let's run it. And now it's saying M state no quarter on 57. We could probably guess that that's the one that I was going to change. Now I'm finally doing that. Just keep tapping up and hit enter. And what do we have here? 69. It doesn't know what count is. So we'll go down to 69. Count should be M count. So if you didn't even change these, then and then we can see ahead of time we need it here. And we already changed that to M state, so I'll save it. Always got to remember save it, and then tap up, hit enter to compile it. Oh, no errors, so that means it must have worked. So that worked. So now let's try the same thing, but we know there's another that driver file. So we're just going to say star.java, which will recompile that one, and it will compile the gumball machine test driver. But what do we have? Cannot find symbol. Gumball machine Java 8 on test drive. Insert quarter. So if we come up here, sold out doesn't have insert quarter. We have an insert quarter here. Uh oh. Am I reading the whole error? Okay, error cannot find symbol, so it can find gumball machine, but insert quarter. So did I misspell quarter? My wife was catching me doing that yesterday when I was messing around with this stuff. Insert quarter, that's spelled right. Eject quarter, turn crank, insert quarter, insert quarter. Oh, I know exactly what it is. There's one more redundant step that I forgot to do. So you just got to remember there's three steps in this state pattern to get this to work right. So you've got any of your special cases up here. Then you've got your general case for the enum here. And then we've got to forward the calls to that enum, which I never did. So I'm going to put them up here. And we have to do the same thing all over again. But here's where, since this driver's expecting void, it doesn't expect any return values, I can shortcut it right now just for the sake of saving time. But I would still recommend returning values to them, even if they don't want to use it. You know, it's just going to be a number. Um, but yeah, we need insert quarter, eject quarter, and turn crank. So insert quarter... Um, and then that's I'm just going to inline it because I'm automatically going to call m state dot insert quart 
enter and uh, just like that of course normally you do functions across multiple lines right but in this kind of situation it's even considered okay for most people that are like a little bit snobby with code to do when you're just forwarding a call like that but the other thing we're doing also is we got to remember that we're returning a state so just in case that any of those calls return a new state we want to save that state back over itself after it runs and otherwise if it just returns this and returns its same state then it just writes itself back over itself no big deal very minimal impact for a lot more consistent readability and uh, and yeah for extending the program in the future like if we decide oh yeah I really do you know I was returning this but I really do want to return a different state there then you can do that okay so those were um, insert eject quarter and turn crank okay oh that's supposed to be a capital C okay and like I said those don't matter I would do something besides void but I'm trying not to take forever in a day I need to change that over here too so just control C control V okay let's see what that does those are saved tap up compile start on Java with X max errors one We've got an error on gumball 55 can't find symbol m state eject quarter <laughs> eject quarter spelt it wrong eject quarter spelt it wrong in two places because I copied and pasted oh three places okay fifty six turn crank cannot be applied to given types turn crank in a new state cannot be applied to given types what is turn crank doing in a new state it's returning this wait what's it doing up here it's returning sold out or no quarter Is that all spelt right? One thing I'll do too here is I can do this should make sure that I'm oh, not creating new functions that I'm actually overriding something which I almost feel like this might already do to some degree turn crank gumball machine machine okay so am I passing in so right here you can see up here turn crank expects an instance of a gumball machine so I need to pass it a this there am I failing to do that for anything else turn crank it looks like that's the only one all right no errors so now we can go back up to Java um, and we'll do the test driver tab through until I find that test drive get rid of the class and bring regular old Java on it alright now we can compare this output I'm gonna look in the book real quick and compare that do a quick manual test on it if I can find it in here state pattern I mean we can just read it too like and make sure so mighty gumball link Java enable that's all normal inventory starts out with five gumballs because we did pass it um, like if we look over here right here we did initialize it with five so that's all right um, five gumballs you insert a quarter you turned a gumball comes rolling down the slot out of gumballs that's not right what's going on here I goofed something up why is it saying out of gumballs
let's see the spots so it can say out of gumballs here machine m count minus machine is equal to so we're we're taking the way i coded that it's taking all the gumballs and just delete like if there's five gumballs it's saying um subtract five from five and store that result in machine m count so what did i do machine m count should just be minus one right Why did it have count there before? Did I do that? That's weird. Okay, so just minus one. I think that should solve it. Recompile everything. Or we should, in theory, only have to recompile that uh, gumball.java. And then we'll run it again. And we'll just do a check right on here. Is that where we went from? All right, so uh, five gumballs. That's right. Machines in the no quarter state, that's right, because it had more than zero. You insert a quarter, you turn a gumball comes rolling down the slot, mighty gumball, da da da. Inventory four, no quarter, that sounds right. You insert a quarter, quarter return because we did call eject quarter in uh turn the crank, da da da. You see right here it's ejecting the quarter. So can't turn crank because after they eject that quarter they still try and turn the crank. So that's good. Um, Mighty Gumball, Java enabled. So there's still four because it wasn't successful in the last one and it's in no quarter state. That sounds right. You insert a quarter, you turn, a gumball comes down the slot. You insert another quarter, turn, gumball comes down the slot. And then they try and eject it, right? So let's see. Insert a quarter, turn, get the gumball. Insert a quarter, turn, get the gumball, and then try and eject it. So it shouldn't let that happen. Unable to eject quarter. So it's still communicating even though we did the more general um, stuff we're still getting the same communication if you compare it to the original messages mighty gumball link now there's two gumballs because in that last started with four t did the two in a row down to two that makes sense machine no quarter makes sense you inserted a quarter you can't insert a quarter so did it try and insert two quarters over here yep it tries to insert two then it turns the crank then it inserts one turns the crank inserts one turn so it looks like it goes one past so where to go you can't insert a quarter. You turned, a gumball comes rolling out. You insert a quarter, you turn, a gumball comes rolling out. Out of gumballs. You can't insert a quarter because obviously it's still trying right here. And uh can't and it still tries to turn the crank. So anyway, that's a barely tested but somewhat reasonable. Mighty gumball, zero gumballs sold out. So it never tested the refill method. So that's something I'll leave as an exercise for you. I guess I'll post this um I'll post this somewhere on my GitHub and um put a link to it at least under the YouTube video and then you can have the code like and I'll link to that repository for their original GitHub repo as well. And so the other thing that they suggest doing is adding a winner state and what they do for the winner state, so they say pick a number, a random number between 1 and 10, and then they want you to um, insert that at another state that's called, like I said, the winner state. But it's comparable to the sold state, which we deleted right in the beginning. And I just thought, oh, is that winner state even necessary? You know, it's just one little block of code. I, I just, it doesn't seem necessary to me. And then I think like even if it was a bigger batter program and I wanted to be able to add and remove that type of idea, I think I'd still go with maybe like a strategy pattern, which is similar, but um I I would not add a whole nother state for that. And even if it it was like, oh, we're only gonna do a contest for one month on our gumball machine where you can win a second gumball for free, which one important thing they do in the code is they make sure that there's um at least two two or excuse me two gumballs if they're going to give you that you know say you're a winner and give you that second one otherwise they just silently go oh there's only one gum one gumball left we won't tell them they're a winner and we'll give them just the one gumball and then go to the sold out state but anyway i i feel like that's another thing where it could just go in this turn crank on has quarter and then you could just to like add a little conditional or something right here 
and even instead this conditional is a code smell as well the thing it's got going for it though is it's a little tiny one-off um, and you know these di like little conditionals like this I don't mind doing so much but otherwise if I've noticed that I'm gonna start building on that I might use like a mapping instead and that's what Python used to encourage. They actually just recently, I want to say to like Python 3.10 or 3.11 or something, they just added a, uh, a switch like thing, a match statement. So that's kind of a bummer because Python, there's always some things in like each language that seem to highlight certain aspects of programming. And Python always highlighted the fact that like they forced you to either do plain old if else statements or you... Uh, used a dictionary which is effectively a mapping to do your thing so what you do then is you say you just pit each condition in the dictionary or in your mapping and in this case it would be if it's a range it doesn't I don't know if if I'm still trying to decide if it's maybe traditional um, if else statements might be more ideal for ranges or not but what you could do is fill up a mapping and then just fill in all the ranges in that mapping. If anybody has any ideas on that, please let me know. Because I'm always, one of my big things is, is I would like to get away from like, when I'm doing high level programming like this, zero if else statements, I think is the ideal. Um, of course, low level, you're going to see a lot more conditionals, whether you want to or not in certain cases. But yeah, I would, I would go for the mapping, a dictionary style mapping, and just, um, you know, so for machine count zero, you would just make an array, so to speak, um, and then at zero would be the, located at index zero, would be the actual function or method that you want to call, or an object with some interface, some expected interface on it. And that way it's always like, the thing is these conditionals in modern times on high level computing are so fast that it's hard to like, you know, really justify doing it another way for performance reasons. But there is this one consideration is um the cache. It's gonna the mappings are gonna be bigger and heavier, but in theory the cache never has to get thrown out which is a big deal on processors at a low level is that so often those cache lines have to be purged because it will guess on a branch statement like oh I've got so many choices I'm gonna guess that this is the one that they're most likely gonna pick and it might not even have a good reason to do so it might just literally be pulling a number or you know picking from drawing straws and in the case it guesses wrong which is probably half or more of the time it's got to throw out that cache line, go get the right answer, refill the cache line, and anyway. So there's, in theory, it could avoid that. But I don't know if there's a possible way to combine the low-level aspects with the high-level aspects. But I'll shut up. But anyway, that's that. That's what um, the Noom pattern is about for doing states and you can also probably see how you could adapt this to for strategy patterns as well um, let me know what you think and thanks for watching